The strength trading system is a triage of exponential moving averages. The blue is your 12 period EMA or exponential moving average. The red is your 26 period exponential moving average. And this pink line here is your 200 EMA. If you want to know how to add these dynamic support and resistance levels to your chart, click indicators, type in EMA, select moving average exponential. Once it adds this indicator to your chart, go ahead and click the wheel and change the input length to 12, 26, or 200. And you can change the color under style. The strength trading system also includes a relative strength index. If you want to know how to add this indicator to your chart, click indicators, type in RSI, select relative strength index. Once it adds this indicator to your chart, click the wheel, and this is default set to 3070. The customized strength trading system settings are 32% on the bull side, 63.5% on the bear side, and I prefer to use step line to make it easier to identify bullish and bearish RSI divergencies. Lastly, the strength trading system includes static Fibonacci isolated range support and resistance levels. These levels do not change with price or time. If we want to take a look at our if we want to take a look at our settings on the Fibonacci isolated range, let's go ahead and look at the settings. Here we go, style. Uh, the important ones to note are the two in teal, 61.8% to 65% comprises your golden pocket region. My favorite Fibonacci number is the 0 0.886 or the 88% retracement, which is a way to maximize your long, short entries and exits. All right, let's go ahead and change this back to 38. All right, let's see. How is our, let's see. How's the mic looking? Okay. Upload speed is fair. Let's let the Discord group know we're going live. And I'm going to try something on the microphone here. Let's see. Let's try this, see if this helps. Okay, the microphone's been going in and out, guys. All right, all right, all right. Let's look at Bitcoin. I did a, I did a comprehensive uh, post last night. And uh, every day we do the same uh, trading routine to strengthen our trading muscles, just like you do a gym routine. And the important takeaways here, and let's see, one of the things I want to point out, let's go ahead and hide our drawings, is that potentially we could have a uh, macro time frame bullish price acceleration, right? So we have a pullback into the four day 200 where we find support. Due to the 40% bounce, right, just due to the size of the move, we have to use some common sense here. It is, it is likely that we could potentially print a weekly higher low because of how high the price bounced, right? Just such a big bullish move, 40%. Uh, it, it, is, it is possible that we're not going to give that entire move back on the first pullback, right? So we pull into the four-day 200, right? And then if we go to the three-day 200, we could see that on a candle closing basis, we're finding support, right? So if we do, and this day's got, this this candle does have two days and 10 hours left to play out, right? But if if this is how it closes and we get a move up, this would be macro time frame bullish price acceleration because we were finding support on the two-day 200. And then we have to zoom into the three-day 200 to find support. And that means that we have macro time frame bullish price acceleration. Right. So when we're looking at the three day, is this a bull flag on the pullback? Right. Let's go ahead and take a look. So a bull flag would typically need to hold a bullish retracement zone. So if we look at our Fibonacci isolated range, Fib ISO. And I'm going to try to zoom in more for you guys. That's one thing I've noted I need to do. Uh, if 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 the if this period pulls into the bull zone, the 38 to the 50. Right. If price on a macro time frame pulls into this level, this is this is still bull flag uh, territory, right? If price loses the 50% re retracement, uh, this is no longer the bull flag is invalidated, and now your most likely scenario would be on a three-day time frame a lower high and a bounce relative to the prior high, right? So that's the most likely scenario on the three-day time frame. What we need to note and keep in mind is that the all-time high of $69,000 down to the monthly high or low of $32,950. You know, the cat is still unalive, right? Do we still have a chance of a dead cat bounce on a macro time frame? Here's our Fibonacci isolated range. Yes, we do, because price has not candle closed above the $46,721 most bearish retracement uh, on the macro three day to weekly time frame, right? The daily time frame remains different, right? Remains different. Uh, on the three-day time frame, or on the daily time frame, our trading range remains $52,098 down to the monthly high or low of $32,950. Our swing high to low static resistance levels 
price bounced into the pro you know, popular profit taking zone, the golden pocket region, printed a daily high, a candle close daily higher high with bearish divergence on the roll of strength and has pulled back, right? So we've lost the bull zone on the on the pullback, right? Just to visualize, we have a daily higher low, a daily higher high, a daily higher low, a daily lower high, and a daily lower low. We are we have, have a daily downtrend confirmed, right? What else is important to note is the bear cross of the 12 and 26 period exponential moving averages on, on the daily time frame. And our most likely and least likely scenarios are going to be determined by our static support levels. Like, so how far have we pulled back? Let's take a look. We've wicked into the golden pocket region, right? So the candle closes are what matter. This is considered a golden pocket hold because the candles are closing above this level, right? So, so far, so good. I mean, the most likely scenario on the daily time frame, right? is a you know here's your prior low here's your high here's your daily uh daily higher low and on the first push up it is more likely and less likely to print a daily lower high right where where would could that potentially be we've seen lots of confluence with these golden pocket retracements let's go ahead swing high to low and if we get a daily lower high bounce this could potentially be a first place we look if the if this is going to be the daily higher low we don't know right? We don't know if this daily level is set, right? We don't know if this is going to be the beginnings of a bounce, you know, and how, how are we going to determine if, if the low is set, we're going to zoom into the four hour time frame, and we're going to look at our, you know, primary, secondary, and potentially tertiary lows and lower lows and look for bullish divergence on the relative strength index, right? So, so far we have, we, we continue to have 12 period four hour exponential moving average resistance. Now we've talked about once price prints a low, oftentimes it'll bounce into the 15 minute 200 EMA. The 15 minute 200 EMA is likely to be confluent with the 12 EMA on the four hour time frame, and that lo and behold it is, right? So let's look at the four hour, uh, maybe we should go, why don't we go to our, let's go to, let's go to our Binance chart and do this. All right, let's do this on our Binance chart. Let me zoom in here. Let me zoom in. So what do we what do we have so far? Right. We have a four hour primary low, a four hour secondary low. And this is this is the beginnings and potentially the makings of a tertiary low. And do we have bullish divergence? Well, between the primary low and the secondary low, here's your four hour primary. Here's your four hour secondary is set right right here. Here's the low we have what's called bearish confirmation, right? So this is this is relative strength confirming the bearish price action. If we look at market cipher B, this is market cipher B on the bottom, the, the blue momentum waves are also confirming bearish price action where the secondary wave is, is a deeper cut than the first wave. So this is confirming the strength trading system signals, right? So here we are with a dramatically four hour candle is lower lower with price pushing back into the 12 period exponential moving average on, on the four hour time frame. And now between your secondary and tertiary low, we currently have bullish divergence forming potentially, but the four hour low is not set. We do have another hour left in this candle. So if we're looking here, I'm looking at this number here, we have a relative strength of 24%. If this is the tertiary four hour lower low, we have a relative strength of 28%, right? So in an ideal world, what we're looking for in the midterm time frame would be relative strength like this, bullish divergence, and on a tertiary low, 32% bounce, right? So once we have these levels on the four hour time frame, we can zoom into the one hour to get more details. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and back these up a little bit. Let's move these out so we can visualize. Let's go ahead and move it. Whoops. There we go. All right, let's take a look at the one hour time. And guys, this is the first time I'm looking at this stuff. So I have no, I have no idea what we're about to get ourselves into here. So on the, on the, on the first four hour low, the primary low, right? We have a deep, uh, deep oversold condition, dramatic bullish divergence in the hour, hourly time frame, no bounce to the 15 minute 200 continuing to lower lows. So if we look at the hourly time frame, what do we got guys? Take a look here. Okay. Are we getting bullish divergence, right? So on your primary four hour low on the hourly time frame, your lowest low is 15%. Your secondary four hour lower low, we have 17%, 2% bullish divergence on the hourly time frame. And on our tertiary four hour lower low, and here's the hourly time frame, 
we're almost there where you've got dramatic bullish divergence in the hourly time frame, almost bouncing off of 32%. This is uh, 30%. So we do have something to pay attention to on the four hour to one hour time frame. And so we have an outlier, right? So if you look at the consistency of the blue waves, right, these these the market cipher B is suggesting we're building bullish momentum that the bears are getting exhausted, right? Then we have this outlier, right? This was an outlier. The most likely scenario on this was a bounce to at least the 15 minute 200 EMA. We did not get that. We had no bounce and we continued to lower lows. I'm not sure if there was some negative news event right here that pushed price to lower lows. I am not a fundamental trader. I'm a technical trader, right? And now we have dramatic bullish divergence. So if you ignore this outlier here, we have potentially bullish momentum and potentially the signs of a lower low being printed right in the golden pocket region on the hourly time frame. So where would be a likely place to get your first bounce in resistance? We talk about this a lot, the 15 minute 200. The 15 minute 200 is your dynamic uh, relevant time frame for your micro time frame dynamic resistance level. So the first place we're gonna take a look is the 15 minute 200. Right, so what is trading with the trend? You know, we are cautious bulls and cautious bears. Why? Because price is firmly below the four hour 200 EMA. We become, uh, we become confident bears if price bounces this four hour 200 EMA, we get a back test and rejection. This is where we become confident bears, right? So we are cautious bears and cautious bulls while this price action sorts out, right? And we know the most likely scenario on a bounce, even if we get above the four hour 200, would be a lower high. And then on a pullback, the you know to become a confident bull, we need to see a firm back test and hold of the four hour 200. So this is a bit of a gray zone. If you're a newer trader, this is not a not a bad time to sit out, let some price action play out. You can paper trade down here in the trading panel and do fictitious positions. You know, spot trading is for beginners with small position size. If you're a beginner trader, I would not advise leverage or derivatives trading, right? So that's what we're looking at on Bitcoin. Potentially the beginnings of a local low. And I took some notes for you guys today. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Let me see my notes. I took my, some notes for you guys today. We got some interesting stuff to cover today. Um, I made notes of all my personal positions. Um, and uh, I had a couple topics to talk about today as well. So let's see what we got on time. Let's, uh, let's see. What do I want to do here? Why don't we just say, why don't we see who's here this morning? Why don't we say hello to everybody? Why don't we say hello to everybody and then we'll do some TA and then I've got instead of doing questions, I have some uh, some notes to go over with you guys. All right. Let's see who's here. We got a good group today. Hey, the traditional markets are taking a break, but our strength traders are not. We're all working every single day. Nifty Danella. Good morning, legend. Grout. Good morning. Ali Emperor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Wildcat Mike. The big sliders here. Server booster investments. Good morning. Frail is here. Good morning. Arminox. Jose Malaya, yo yo, final deliverance with his daily yo yo. MD Invest, hello, good morning. Valdrin is here. Gunpoint, hello, good morning. Endless, let's see, self rallies here. Good morning, hardcore traders. That's right. And crypto, hello, sensei. We got a new name, GB. I can see what? I don't, okay. GB's got some interesting comments. Okay, hello to you, sir. Uh, Alex Trebek, hello, everybody. Nasonic, a new regular. SW's back. SW1008, good morning. Alex Trebek, this dead cat makes me a dog person. So here's a funny topic, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll cover this real quick. If you guys go to my homepage, I did it, I posted a video last night in the ideas section uh, with, with this title, right? So I my opinion is that Social media over recent years has created a, a global cesspool of hypersensitivity. Like you can't, it's it's not okay to have an opinion. You know, everybody's trying to be more outraged than somebody else on social media to get attention, right? Everybody's super hypersensitive. And I had a conversation with somebody where people are so sensitive now that you cannot refer to dead people as dead anymore. And that, that the politically correct way to, to revert, refer to somebody that is dead is unalive. So I thought that was hilarious. And that's why uh, my video title was Bitcoin cat still unalive rather than dead as price seeks weekly high or low. So I thought that was really funny and shines a, a, a spotlight on how crazy our societies become with uh, social media and social media addictions and people competing with each other to be more outraged at a topic to get more attention on social media, right? 
Very, very interesting. That was one of the points I wanted to cover with you guys today. The cat is still on alive. Okay, hello, gamer. Let's see. Sicho. Okay, the Jewfish Pro Team member. Good morning, my brother. Hello. All right, let's see. We said hello. We said hello to a lot of people. Okay. So let's do let's do some TA for about 15 minutes. I got some interesting topics to cover for you guys. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of the tickers. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Let's take a look at uh, Litecoin. Um, and before I move on, I was sort of watching this scenario. Let me see. Let me show you guys. Uh, let's see. Was it the hourly? This is something I was watching. Okay. So this is what's called a descending, uh, this is called a descending broadening wedge, right? Which is like the inverse of a falling wedge. And this has the same, same statistical probability to be exhausting the bears and result in a bull break. So even though it's a backwards or inverse, inverse falling wedge, this, this, this candlestick pattern uh, is suggesting that the bears are going to get exhausted. We're going to have some sort of a local low and some sort of a bounce to an hourly higher high. Uh, and I believe the statistics on this are about 73% to break bullish. I think it's the same the same statistics as you would have with the falling wedge. So something to keep an eye on. And some of these we have higher time frames. So there, there's your there's your descending broadening wedge on the hourly time frame for Bitcoin. And then if you zoom out to the four hour, you know there's some arguments to be made on these candlestick patterns where you have you know, a traditional style, uh, you know, traditional style falling wedge style patterns, right? And you prefer to have, say, three candle touches to the pattern to be valid where you have a midterm time frame falling wedge, right? And within that midterm time frame falling wedge, you have a micro time frame descending broadening wedge. Both are both are bearish exhausting candlestick patterns, you know, seeking a local low that would result in an oversold bounce, right? Something I just wanted to show you guys. You guys can take a look at these these uh, yourself on several of the other different coins. All right, so let's go to let's go to Ethereum. Ethereum was the most bearish, right? The most bearish of all our, our assets. We were looking at potentially this falling wedge style pattern on the hourly time frame. Uh, and what do we, you know? Ethereum was was really bearish. So when Bitcoin was grinding down, and the, you know, Ethereum gave you a quattro scenario where you had you know, on the hourly time frame, you had a primary, a secondary, tertiary, quattro, four of them, and you had an embedded, embedded oversold condition uh, with no dramatic bullish divergence, right? Um, this, you know, and that was weaker than the other assets. So this was interesting. E Ethereum was an outlier. And what we had talked about is that Ethereum's a lead bear. And I think we had talked about this yesterday, that potentially Ethereum is going to give us the first signs of, you know, being a lead bull, right? And so what do we have here? We have a we have a a uh, a similar pattern. We have a a broadening wedge that's pushing sideways, right? So we have this is a a a broadening wedge, the inverse of an equilibrium pattern, right? And if we look at our primary, secondary, and tertiary on the hourly time frame, so here's your primary, here's your secondary, here's your tertiary, right? So we have the primary is a low, the secondary is a lower low, and the tertiary is a candle close higher low. But if we look down here, guys, we got dramatic hourly bullish divergence on Ethereum. And if we look at Cypher B, it's the same thing. Market Cypher B on the blue waves is confirming, you know, the blue waves are confirming what the relative uh, strength and the strength trading system is telling us that potentially we are printing a local low. So where's the first place we zoom into for dynamic resistance? Uh, you know, what I've seen in a lot of these coins, I did look at the charts last night. I did. I was very active trading last night. And you have pretty much two two categories of coins. You have those that were uh, back testing the 15 minute 200 EMA. And you have those that were potentially challenging the 30 minute 200 EMA. And this this is where I'd be looking for potentially a, a back test and resistance on the first push up. Right. So I think potentially we continue to follow out this this. Uh, inverse equilibrium i don't do you guys like broadening wedge or inverse equilibrium better you know what terminology sounds better to you either either way uh it's it's the same situation with the same statistical probabilities this one's considered to be a neutral pattern uh and four percent favored to break in the direction of the trend right so this is a 54 percent chance to break in the direction of the trend the trend is down right so we're seeing a glimmer of hope for the bulls that potentially we have uh, potentially we have local lows being set 
uh, on the one hour to four hour time frame, right? And so what I'm doing is I'm keeping in mind on the daily, I, I had a great conversation with one of our pro team members this morning and talking about, you know, how do we pick the trend since we're, we're sort of in a gray zone with Bitcoin in regards to the four hour 200. I would just look at the daily time frame. I and mean, if you look, you know, look left for clues, you know, it's very clear that, you know, these assets are in a daily downtrend. And if you want to pick a direction trading with, you know, trade with a daily trend and the daily trend is down, right? So uh, if you want to have, uh, uh, you know, and that would be in, in regards to strength trading without using stop losses that you would be shorting without stop losses because you're in a daily downtrend and in a series of daily lower highs, right? Make your own trading decisions. I'm just an educator on the strength trading system, right, guys? So that was a conversation we had this morning. All right, let's take a look at Litecoin, right? Litecoin is going to be different. Okay, so we had this. So here's a great example we talked about with these falling wedge style patterns, right? You know, sometimes you have to adjust, you have to fudge or adjust your pivots, right? So I like to do this on the hourly time frame. So let's zoom into the hourly and see if it makes sense. Does it make sense to adjust our pivots? And is this still going to be a falling wedge style pattern if we adjust our pivots, right? So we can we can take a look and see and we're, we're, we're targeting three touches, right? So this is really more of a clear falling wedge by fudging our pivots, right? You know, we can see we have one, two, th three, four, five, right? So usually, you know, you want three touches on the bull and bear side to fill out this falling wedge style pattern. So I'd say fudging our pivots makes this more a technically more of a technically sound falling wedge style pattern, uh, exhausting the bears on the way down. All right, let's take a look. We'll start on the four hour. Start on the four hour time frame. All right, and I'm not going to cover like if you guys watched yesterday's streams, I went more into detail in the trading ranges uh, on on the weekly, daily, and four hour time frames. Right now, we're just trying to focus on the current price action. We have a lot to cover today, right? All right. So here, you know, what, what's our four hours? Okay, here's on your first pullback. Here's your four hour primary, right? Here's your four hour secondary. Here's your four hour tertiary, right? Do we have bullish divergence? Not really. We're just sort of grinding a low, along the 32% uh, relative strength index. We do have a four hour lower low. This is bullish divergence worth noting. Let's see, we got 30%, 31% versus 33. So a 2% bullish divergence on the four hour time frame. Once we have a primary and or secondary, we can zoom into the hourly time frame, right? And in general, in general, so we have this outlier here, right? We have this outlier both, you know, on price action and on, on market cipher B. But if you look in general, does it look like we are exhausting the bulls on the way down, right? So in general, on the hourly time frame, you have oversold conditions. We go up and over. We go, we we wick below the oversold conditions, and we're bouncing right off of 32% on the hourly time frame. So, and then if you look at Cipher B, in general, the waves are getting smaller, with the exception of this outlier. There again, guys, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of news event right here in regards to Russia and Ukraine that pu pushed the price lower due to f a fundamental news event, right? So it looks like, you know, we have bearish exhausting candlestick patterns, falling wedges, which are 73% to break bullish. We have signs of dramatic hourly bullish divergence. We have to note the outlier. So potentially, potentially, potentially we have a, uh, a local low being printed. And if we zoom in, you can see that the 15 minute 200, let's go ahead and hide our drawings, is as anticipated is going to be our first dynamic resistance level, right? So if we look left for clues. The 15 minute 200 has been rejecting price since February 16th. That's been a, been a quite a long time, right? All right. So let's see how we're doing on time. We got five minutes. So let's see five minutes. So what, uh, what I want to cover is my own personal positions real quickly. You know, and I did take a look. Um, let's go ahead. Let's do, uh, so let's do Ethereum first. Okay. And I, and I looked at, so this is a general overview, general overview of, uh, let me erase all this stuff here of what my personal positions are. And we're going to go, we're going to go with some of the four hour time frame. Okay. So Ethereum, where am I now? Okay. I am two, two bullets long. Okay. My long average is, is above the current price. Now, if, for you guys that have been watching my stream for a long time, you guys will recall that I was shorting here and I had negative shorts. And then I added to my short positions up here to pull my average up and then closed all my uh, shorts in dramatic profit. Right. So all my Ethereum shorts were closed in this area here. 
right? So I am two bullets long Ethereum. I'm currently negative. Let's just say I don't I don't know exactly. Let's say my long average is here, right? On this on this signs of 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 uh, bullish divergence on the hourly time frame and the bounce. So I had two different categories of coins, right? I was looking for a local low and a push up either into the 15 minute 200 or the 30 minute 200. To, to reopen short positions, right? So what I did on a lot of these assets is you identified a four hour trading range, right? And then swung high to low to look for my static resistance levels. We've got to readjust this. So here's, here's your Fibonacci isolated range. Let's take a look at our Fib ISO. Here's your static resistance levels and here's the 38. So on Ethereum, <clears throat> I chose to have a short position at the 38% retracement, right? So we were like down here. I put a short here. Price pushed up, not high enough to fill my short. So I have an open short up there that did not get filled, right? So I'm two bullets long, waiting for signs of bullish divergence to pull my short average down <clears throat> and then have very shallow long targets. Let's look at E. So ENS. So this is going to be a five minute overview of my position. So ENS, right? ENS, I am long. I have a big long position here at these lows, and uh, I closed out my sh my final short on ENS. I closed out at this 88% retracement right here. So on this pullback, all of my shorts, and I think I was, I don't know, I was three to five bullets short. Closed everything out down here, and I'm scaling into a long position. Price is currently below my below my long average, right? And I was looking to short this asset, and I was targeting. What was I targeting? Oh, I was targeting. I know what I was targeting. So each one of these is different. So on, on ENS, I swung from high to low. Here was your current pivot low last night, and I was targeting the 88% retracement. So I had a short position uh, right here at the 88%, right? Price pushed up, and I did not get filled on the short, right? So I did not get filled up here. So right now on ENS, I am long, have an 88% short target to get into a short, did not get filled. Luna. So Luna, my personal position, I am two bullets long. My average, where price is over my average right now. My average is down here somewhere, and I am not short. So Luna, so I am actually in six different coins right now, and I do not like being in six assets. I prefer to be in five. So my game plan with Luna on the shallow bounce is just close my long trade and profit and then get myself down to only being in five assets instead of six. All right, so people, 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 people. All right, so people, so I had some great execution. So the ones that I executed well on was a one-point checklist, right? So some I was doing Fibonacci retracements for entering into short positions because we're in daily downtrends. The the only assets that I had a one-point checklist, you know, last night looking at looking at potentially, you know, bullish divergence on the hourly time frame was a one-point checklist to enter a short position at 15 minute 200 EMA. So on people. I am long above the current price action. My long is negative, right? And I am one full bullet short right here at the 15 minute 200. I did log in and check and I did get filled and I'll be looking for more hourly bullish divergence to hedge my long position. So I think I'm, I think I'm three bullets long and one bullet short to hedge and I'll book those short gains and those short gains I could use to pull my, my average price down. Uh, to exit my long, my counter trend trade long position profitably. So this is the same thing I did with the shorts back in early to mid February. There again with SLP. That's another one I've been day trading a lot. SLP. It was the same thing on the pullback. Here was you know we're looking at the hourly, looking at signs of of bullish divergence, right? On the 15 minute 200, I just had a one point checklist with a series of daily lower highs, and I entered a hedge position short here. In SLP, I'm three bullets long with the average above the current price, so I'm negative, and I am one full bullet short right here uh, to hedge my long position. And once I see more signs, and potent potentially this was a low, potentially I missed the bottom, but uh, I'll be looking to exit my short position, book the gains, and use those funds to help pull my, my long average down, use the profits to pull my long average down so I never, you know, never click out of a position uh, in the red, right? Stop loss is a loss, right? I do, I do not take like taking losses. Let's see. Is this one we can adjust here? All right. All right. Yep. So that's still a falling wedge style pattern on SLP, right? All right. So those are my personal positions. I know I went over that quickly, but I wanted to get that done in five minutes. 
All right. So we have a couple other topics to talk about. So one of the things I wanted to point out, I thought this this was on Trading Views news feed today, um, is this article here. So you can go to uh, let's see. I'll post this in the chat. Let me see. Just in the chat. This was a really so we've had some uh, interesting debates in the stream chain stream team and talking about we have a lot of newer traders that don't understand uh, blockchains and stuff like that. And we've had some people posting articles about Canada and, you know, like FUD articles to pull the markets down, right? So I think this is bullish, right? So you're talking about the prime minister, prime minister attempting to seize cryptocurrency funds, and they have seized central banking funds. And I've always argued that, hey, you have more protection by being in a blockchain-based asset than a centralized bank, right? So Canada has frozen funds and centralized banks to these truckers, right? And then uh, let's see here. Where is it at? Uh, let's see. Where is the part of the article? Anyway, you guys need to read this article. It talks about how they cannot seize the funds. Here we go. As the Canadian government ramps up efforts to flow the funds to, to demonstrators, the Ontario Superior Court sent this company a self-custodial custodial Bitcoin wallet. Uh, ordering to freeze disclosed information about the assets. In their official response to the uh, Ontario Superior Court, they replied that it is self-custodial, collaborative, multi-sig Bitcoin wallet and that it is a software provider, not a custodial financial, financial intermediary, right? Right. And then we cannot collect any user identification information but beyond email addresses. We also do not hold any keys. Therefore, we cannot freeze our users' assets. We cannot prevent them from being moved. We do not have knowledge of the existence, nature, value, and location of our users' assets. This is by design. Guys, this is why we're part of the cryptoverse, right? We have control of our own financial assets. Governments cannot seize our assets, right? So we've had some debate about that. And I've been arguing that, hey, your funds are safer in, in blockchain-based assets because you have full control and anonymity, right? So here's an here's an attempt of a centralized government to seize blockchain-based assets, and they failed to do so, right? So go ahead and read that article for yourself. That's been a debate recently. Hold on one second, guys. All right, all right, all right. All right, let's see. I'm going to go to uh, – let's go to some questions. We'll do questions for about another 10 minutes here. Let me scroll back. We have some unusual content today. Let me see my notes. Is there anything else to talk about? I have one more thing to talk about my notes here. Uh, let's see here. Any questions? Question from Star of Hope. Do you, do you check supply like stocks float? Do you mean um, – I mean, if you go to coinmarketcap.com, when I do token metrics of a project, ENS is a good example, right? So you, you could check um, you can check circulating supply, 20 million. You could check total supply is 100 million. So this is what we call token metrics of a cryptocurrency-based asset, and these are deflationary over time where they release less coins over time rather than more coins over time. So, um, you know, something – Something that I would take a look at right here. Um, is that what you're talking about? Is the do you check supply like stock flow? Yeah, I do do so for, for my uh, coin accumulation assets. I do check, I do check uh, these numbers here circulating supply and total supply. Here's your circulating supply for ENS 20 million. The total supply will never exceed 100 million. So hopefully, I answered your question there. Let's see. Do you mainly trade big coins? Um, yeah. So when I'm so one of the ways I pick assets is for me is if I'm let's well, let's pick a let's pick a, I don't know let's pick SLP. Right. So for me in my positions, I need twenty million dollar a day volume to 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 be a liquid asset. Right. So any of these exchanges here that have over twenty million dollar a day volume. Uh, is something that, I, that I'm going to trade and, and consider a liquid exchange with this asset. If we look at ENS, ENS will be an example, I'm sure, where you have exchanges that have less than $20 million a day volume. So, yeah, so Binance is only $11 million a, a day. ENS is very illiquid right now. That is my that is my definition of big coins. And so, yeah, if you guys want to see my – here's my watch list, right? 
And then <clears throat> and if you guys look at my green list here, so these these are the coins that I trade. Here's the ones that I'm currently in positions. Here's the ones that I'm watching. These are the coins that I interact with the most right here on this side. So, all right, we got about four more minutes for questions. Let's see, leverage trading definitely takes an emotion up the notch. Yep, got to be disciplined. Yep, so final segued me into my final note. So I've been reading some chat in the stream team on the Discord group, right? And there's been, you know, discussions of, you know, positions and sizes and, you know, money being negative and positive. And just like you've heard, you know, you're only, you only make money when you sell your position, you know, and book your gains. You only lose money when you close your position negatively and book your losses, right? So one of the, one of the advantages, so I would say that I've seen, uh, you know, ex-professional gamblers or ex-professional poker players make fantastic traders, right? And so why is that? If you're a gambler, a successful gambler, you have to. You, oftentimes, you have to have a disconnect with 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 currency, a currency disconnect, where it's basically like you're paying for playing for points rather than dollars, right? If you have a great emotional connection to currency, you're going to be trading scared, right? So, what I would advise, whatever your bankroll is, you're going to have a tremendous advantage as a trader if you have a fiscal disconnect to those funds. It's not real. That is not real currency until you pull it off the exchanges and put it in your bank account, right? So, if you guys have these positions, if you're in positions and they're negative, say you're in a position and it's negative a thousand US dollars, and that is gut wrenching to you. Then your position size is too high. You have to be trading positions that your negatives uh, do not gut wrench you. You need to. One of the things you need to learn is fiscal disconnect with currency for your trading accounts. Otherwise, you're going to be trading scared, right? You can't you can't be, trade scared and be a successful trader, right? So hopefully, I made sense on that point. That was my final note of the day, and final is the one that segued me into that point. Okay. Yep. Hello from Greece. You sound better today. This is Dominico. No cough. Nice to see you. Yes, finally. Gosh, it's been like four weeks. Ali Emperor, number one stream in the TradingView platform. That's a true story. We are the number one. We are the top stream on TradingView. That is true. This is a joke on a live. Interesting. I thought, yeah, the Nifty Danella, I thought that was hilarious that uh, people are no longer dead. They are on alive. Yep. That is hilarious. That is. I love using that term. Let's see, does that make us all undead? Yeah, that's a good point. Are we undead? Yes, we are. We are undead. <laughs> Can't use the word dead now. <laughs> we're we are non unalive <laughs> for the library. God, what a funny topic. All right, and crypto dead cat balance or dead cat not alive balance. Reason for me setting long positions. Sorry, guys. Market most of the time goes against me. Next time I'll let you know before setting up my positions. Yep. Yeah, I mean, guys, if you want to pick a direction, you know, stick with the strength trading, strength trading rules. I mean, price is below the four hour 200 EMA. We have a series of daily lower highs at the moment. We're in a daily downtrend. You know, we do lack clarity with the four hour 200 EMA right now. But, uh, tr you know, if you had to pick a side, I would say trading with the trend is shorting, right? Even though we lack clarity with the four hour 200. And if you guys are losing funds, I mean, that's an investment in your trading education. Trust me, guys, I, I closed. I had lots of uh, negative positions, lots of liquidations that led to uh, part of my 10,000 10, hour trading journey included lots of lots of financial losses. X Stafen, good morning. How do we think about, let's see, how much do we think about issues war will delay the next crypto trend upwards? Well, that, that Iran missile situation under Trump pushed the markets up and marked the bottom. We got we got to remember that. All right, we got to one more minute for questions. Nifty Danella, so when would you be comfortable to say that the trend is changing when price pushes over the 200 EMA? Yeah, yep. As as strength traders, it's very very clear the rule the rule the strength trading rule is price interaction with the four hour 200 EMA, right? So if you look left from November 15th, the four hour 200 always rejected price. So this was a very strong downtrend on the four hour 200 EMA. Once we pushed above the four hour 200 EMA, and we did go over this on every stream, we were waiting for a back test of the four hour 200 EMA. I was a cautious bull here with the spaceship. We went over this many, many times that we were never oversold on the hourly time frame here. And that was that that made me cautious. I did vocalize that every day. Then we print the lower high and we, we don't even we don't even hesitate on the four hour 200 to me it pull to pull to lower lows, right? So confirmation <clears throat> that we would be confident bulls would be a push up 
a firm back test, an oversold back test and hold of the four hour 200 EMA. I want to see over hourly oversold conditions and a hold of the four hour 200 EMA. Hopefully I answered your question, Nifty Danella. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. We got uh, we can start building a special request list. If you guys have more questions, we can go through that. <clears throat> what breaking news? France took over Monaco in a flash. What is that true off here? Let's see here. All right. <clears throat> Price is not high enough to fill my shorts and thews 2022. <laughs> there you go. There you go, guys. There you go. Possible inverse head and shoulders printing on 15 minute. Yeah, guys. I mean, you know, <clears throat> yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking to, uh, I'm looking to, to, to short here. Add to some shorts, guys. Add to some shorts. All right. Let's see. MD. So what are you look? What's your long target for people? 15 minute, 200 EMA. Um, so my long target for people. So I'm negative. The first thing is to pull my, my, my long average in the positive side. And in the meantime, I'm looking to, book as many reps, you know, as many times as I could book, you know, book short and close and book, book this profit here. I mean, if we look at our price range tool, you know, if I, if I book my short down here at these lows and this is, you know, a, a bullet size is a decent position for me. That's a 10% uh, cross margin. That's a 10% cross margin gain for me on, on a single bullet position. If I can close down at these lows and I, I'll be looking for 15 more, 15 minute bullish diversions to close, to close on my long as on my short, right? Man, on the next bounce, I could add again. So my long target is not going to be, I'm not going to have a long target until I have confirmation of a local low. I need confirmation of a four hour or hourly local low. And then, yes, I, you know, what I will, what, what I would endeavor to do is get my long average below the one hour, 200. That's typically what I do. If I'm, if I'm backwards on a long, I want to pull my average below this one hour, 200 scale out, scale out, put some more bullets back in the gun. The more bullets I have in the gun, the more I can manipulate my average price. You know, if I'm five bullets deep here, I can't move it. If I'm one bullet deep here and the price pulls back, then, you know, I could, I could move my, my, my long average down. So that is all part of the trading course. We go over heaven, hell, and purgatory in the advanced part of the trading course. Let's see. Oh, Stacy's here a little late, but she'll rewatch it. Okay, people, we got that. Let's see. I guess I'm really behind today. Currently, BTC four hour is long with bat, black swan, deep crab platforms more likely. Huh? All right. Can you post that link for that article? Yep, the article's right up here. Uh, oh, wait, the link for the – did I do the wrong link? Did I do the wrong link? Let's see here. I thought I posted this link. Let's see. Boom. Did it not do it? That's the article link. Did that not work? There it is. I guess I posted the wrong link. Okay. I guess I posted the wrong link. All right. <clears throat> A couple more. We got about 15 minutes. We can do special requests. We can answer questions. Uh, okay. Thank you. Heads up for the gunpoint. Yes, good point on the funds. Saturday, you said you have a surprise. Yes, I still have a surprise. Thanks for reminding me of the surprise. I'll put that in my notes. We'll go over the surprise. Uh, uh, I'll put it in my notes right here. We're not going to have time to do it today. Uh, I do have a surprise for you guys. I, I need to start it at the top of the stream, though. All right. <clears throat> Is the course available? I recently joined your Discord. The course is not currently available. It is very in depth. There's a beginner, intermediate, advanced. It is uh, going to be lots of, you know, several hours within your 10,000 10, hour journey. So, but I'll be, I'm going to be able to give you guys a sneak peek probably at the end of this week. Sneak peek probably at the end of this week, guys. Um, I don't have an exact date yet. We have the, 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 the site is looking fantastic. We, we have some challenges. One of them is accepting crypto payments right now. All right. So Valdrin, let's see. You guys want, you guys want to do some special requests for the last 15 minutes here? Do you guys have questions? I'll go ahead and start. I'll start with this one. Was it Algo? Algo USDT. Everybody else is taking the day off and we got this, the hardcore people here, the hardcore people here participating in the, the stream that we do every day. Anybody, any other, I don't think I saw other special requests if I scroll back. I don't think so. I don't think so. So I'm looking for regular viewers, special request tickers. 
Yep, here we go. XRP, regular viewers, XRP, USDT, blue chip asset. Miss Sonic, can you do crypto? Sure. Fra Frail wants to do AVAX. AVAX, USDT. Okay, we got three. We got one more. Uh, Xstafen wants render. Okay, so the, that's the last one I'll take. RNDR. So you guys that are new to the stream, okay, we do... Um, we do, if I, if I recognize your name and you're here every day, I'm going to do your ticker before somebody else, okay? We're just looking for people that are, are committed in a trading education. You know, there's lots of YouTubers and, and content creators out there that are only concerned about shilling their affiliate links and uh, handing somebody a fish rather than teaching someone how to fish. I'm going to reward the people that are trying to learn how to fish by uh, paying attention to their special request tickers. Okay, let's look at ALGO. So let's do our strength trading system. We want to first mark our weekly, daily, and relevant trading range, right? So where's our weekly? We do the weekly and level. We look left. Here's your prior weekly low, right? Where's your weekly, where's your prior weekly low or high? Right here, there's your weekly trading range. Let's zoom into the daily. So what's our daily? Here's our daily higher low right here compared to the weekly level. Right. So our trading range is going to be from the weekly level down to the daily 79.57. So we're going to swing from high to low and we're looking at our Fibonacci isolated resistance levels. Fib ISO. Here's your most bearish retracement, the 38. So by definition, this is bearish. Let's take it the four hour time frame. We are firmly below the four hour 200 EMA. All right. <clears throat> so this is a point where we can zoom out. Right. So you see. So the strength trading system, we use like a pair of binoculars uh, to zoom in and out to get clarity. So one of the things. One of the things that I'm seeing on the four hour time frame will illustrate that. If we look at the, the primary low, we're seeing signs of bearish exhaustion on the four hour time frame at these lows. We're getting, we're getting dramatic bullish divergence over time on the four hour. If we look at Cypher, these blue waves at the low are deeper and these blue waves get shallower. So market Cypher is confirming what we're seeing on the relative strength index, right? So this is not super clear. All right, of course we lost the microphone. <clears throat> so we can we can squeeze these pivots together, right? So if you say, okay, look, I got a four hour primary low here, you know, a four hour secondary, four hour tertiary, and there's like a lot of distance between these these primary, secondaries, and tertiaries, right? We can focus the binoculars by zooming in or out, right? So we could check the eight hour. Does the eight hour give us a little more clarity? Yes, right? It does. So what do we see on the eight hour, right? We're squeezing these pivots together, right? Now we have an eight hour uh, primary low, eight hour secondary low, eight hour tertiary lower low. And in general, you've gotten dramatic bullish divergence. And in general, on market cipher, you have even more dramatic bullish divergence, right? So, th you know, this asset, Algo, is attempting to print a midterm time frame low. Let's check the daily, see if we get any more clarity. So, on the daily, right? On the daily, more clarity here's your primary secondary we're attempting the tertiary what's great about this on the daily i gotta zoom in i gotta remember to zoom in with you guys what's great about the daily time frame let's zoom in is that we got candle closed lower lows right candle closed lower lows and so what's great about the daily is that your primary is the highest low your secondary is a lower low and on your and on your tertiary on the daily this is going to give us the best most clear relative strength indications right on the daily time frame what we're looking at because if we look at the four hour the four hours different. You have a primary lower low, a, a secondary higher low, and a tertiary lower low. On the daily, we have a series of lower lows, right? Where price is candle closing down. So let's visualize this. So here's your daily low. Your secondary is a candle closed lower low on the daily, and your tertiary, if the daily low is set, is a lower low, right? So that's your daily time frame. And on the four hour, it's different. On the four hour, it's a higher low here, right? This is a lower low and this is a higher low. So we want a series of candle closed lower lows. The daily gives us clarity in that regard, right? And if we look at the daily time frame, we have some sort of ideal bullish divergence, right? So on the, on the primary low, price goes up, goes to a candle closed lower low, right? And then on the tertiary low, we have a, a, a candle closed lower low and higher and higher relative strength, right? So on your primary low right here, 28%. Let's see, on your secondary low, 34, 35%, 7% bullish divergence. And on your tertiary low, we got 34%, right? So this is potentially uh, looking to print a, a, a midterm to macro time frame low. And potentially here, just looking at the eight hour, potentially you have a bearish exhausting 
uh, bull flag pattern as we're grind, grinding to lower lows. This one may be setting up for a local low. That's what I'd be paying attention to. We know our most we know our most bearish retracements to 38% retracement. What is our dynamic uh, relevant dynamic resistance level? Let's take a look. Is it the two hour? Is it the three hour? What is it? It's the three hour. So if you want to stay midterm zoomed in, we have price international price on the three hour 200, right? And you can see that we're grinding out the bears right now. So this one looks like it's setting up potentially for a local low. All right, <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. Let's look at XRP. We'll start on the daily for XRP. We've been looking at XRP. All right, so here's your daily 200. We get we get the the weekly level of 55 cents. We push up and find resistance at the daily 200, right? We can see that we have daily 12 period exponent moving average support at first. Let's zoom into the four hour. All right, so we're still grinding the four hour 200 EMA here. We did the the fib. This is what I was trying to highlight. We looked at this one yesterday. So the golden pocket region is stiff resistance, and we have four hour 200 EMA as stiff support, right? And what what do we got? What is the most common candlestick pattern, guys? After a big bullish move, right? And we get it twice. The most common candlestick pattern in all charts is what equilibrium pattern, right? Tightening of a trading range, right? Bear break, right? If we if we look zoom out, equilibrium pattern, right? We're tightening the trading range. If you guys want to visualize this, so oftentimes after a big bullish move, when we go from the candle closes, right? In strength trading system, we discount the wicks. We are tightening the trading range for XRP. Right, the tighter this gets, the the, the larger the move is going to be. So this is uh, considered to be a neutral candlestick pattern. We are holding four-hour dynamic resistance. This is 54% chance to break in the direction of the trend. The deck direction of the trend is up. So you have a slight favorite to break in the direction of the trend. As we're tightening trading ranges, guys, it is it is a little it is not. This is not an ideal scenario to use the strength trading system. Right, you use price action and pivot points. Right. So when you're tightening the trading range, you're not you're not breaking the candle close lows and lower lows. You're, you're doing higher lows, lower highs, higher lows, lower highs, higher lows, lower highs. Right. You can't use the strength trading system on that when you're tightening the trading range. So what you do is you use price action to determine your most likely and least likely scenario. So what do I, what do I mean by that? Here's another great educational opportunity. All right. So as we tighten the trading range, we can mark our pivots. Right. And so you look at price action. Um, and you could use wicks or candle closes where we're, I mean, this is, you know, just, just squeaking the lower high. So these are the pivots in white that you're looking at. Let me zoom in here to give you more likely and least likely scenarios. And what I often do is I use the secondary pivots and this is likely to continue to tighten, right? This is likely to continue to tighten where you may have, you know, a lower high pivot here and a higher low pivot here before price actually breaks, right? Potentially. Right. So what I usually do to be safe, because you can get both bull and bear fake outs, you know, a fake out would be is that price goes down and then rips up. Right. That is that is a bear fake out and a bull fake out would be price goes up and rips down. Right. And the fake out would require breaking a prior pivot. Right. So if you want to be safe, what would you know, visually speaking, what would be your safe pivots? Right. So on the bear side, your safe pivot would be this one. And on the bull side, your safe pivot would be this one. Right. So potentially, if you're looking for a bull or bear break, you can wait for multiple pivot breaks to see to get confirmation of the direction of the trend. Right. And then all, more often than not, let's just say you get a big, you know, say you get a big bear dip. You know, this happens quite a bit. Say we get a big bear dip. Oftentimes price will bounce and reject off of the, the pivot trend line or the actual uh, or the actual trend line like this. Right. Oftentimes you get a second shot to get in. So. Same thing on the bull side. Well, price will push up, you know, pull back, you know, and then you get a chance to get in on the trend line or get get in on the prior resistance level, right? These these pivots on the bull and bear side are, are very very tight. Look at how many you got one, two, three pivots that are confluent. So this is going to be strong support. These three things are the same, including the four hour two hundred. That's confluent, and you got two two bull pivots and the golden pocket region confluent. So there's lots of confluence on each side. There's strong resistance and strong support as XRP tightens the trading range. All right, all right, all right. Let's do AVAX. Wow, we got five minutes left. We might actually be on time today. We might actually be on time. Let's take a look at the daily. Let's go to the four hour. Let's go to the four hour here. All right. Let's get our bearings. Let me get my bearings here. Okay, so the trading range that we're looking at right here is from 117.53 down to the weekly level of 
95. That is our trading range. Here's let's visualize our golden pocket region. Price squeaked above the golden pocket range, right, and pulled back. So we we are not we are failing to provide support on the two hour uh, on the four hour 200 EMA, right? So we are cautious bulls. We are printing higher highs on the pushes up. Something important to note. And there again, this would be sort of a ascending, uh, a sort of ascending broadening wedge or sideways. See where this is a broadening wedge style pattern. Again, we're seeing this we're seeing this pop up, right? So AVAX, where's our support level? We're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and mark our four hour. This, this chart is so messy. I'm sorry, guys. I feel I hate when I get in a rush to to uh, try to crank out extra content. Maybe I should focus on less less content and focus on quality over quantity. I hate being quantity focused. I feel like it diminishes the educational content. So where's our support? So there again, you got your swing low to swing high. So our swing low on the four hour 64.85 to the swing high at 97.20. And are you guys surprised to see golden pocket support? No, nope, we're seeing this on Bitcoin too. So AVAX is a little different because we have d d a daily high and daily higher highs. Bitcoin does not, right? So, and we are still lacking. We're, we're cautious bulls, right? We are cautious, cautious bulls here. And for AVAX, if I had to pick a side, and you have to keep Bitcoin in mind as the context, right? We, we're lacking clarity. If you have to pick a side, I would pick the bull side on AVAX uh, if I had to pick a side. We have daily highs and daily higher highs, right? And we are we are near the four-hour 200 EMA. Although you did get a push up and a back test right here in resistance, but we did not candle close to lower lows, and we're still holding the golden pocket region. So <clears throat> we are lacking clarity. But if I had to pick a side, AVAX, I would pick the bull side, keeping in mind Bit Bitcoin context. And if Bitcoin goes to lower lows, it's going to drag drag AVAX with it, right? More than likely. All right, let's do render, render token. Let's do the weekly. All right, we've already, we've already, I don't even remember looking at this one. All right. <clears throat> All right, so our trading range of render is 550 down to the weekly level $1.80. We noted that our static resistance level of the golden pocket region was realized. Let's erase these brush strokes. God, this stream went by super fast today. Um, and so where's our where's our where's our bull zone? We have to swing from low to high. Let's look at our Fibonacci isolated range, Fib ISO, right? So we've lost the golden pocket region, right? So here's your golden pocket. Let me zoom in. Got to remember to keep zooming in. All right, here's your golden pocket region. We've lost that level, right? We have lost the golden pocket region, which is more bearish than a lot of the other assets we're looking at. Is where, where, where are we at in regards to 78? So we've realized the 78% retracement. What's nice on this one? Let's go to the four hour time frame. <clears throat> is we have lows and lower lows, right? The strength traders want lows and lower lows, right? So we do have some clarity. This is what you know, this is what we're waiting for on Bitcoin. A low below the four hour 200, back test and rejection, candle closing basis. We discount the wicks. And if you look at that wick, that's called a bear wick. You have a big long shadow showing price reversal. This is bearish, right? The big long wick. That is not a bullish thing, right? So we have a four hour primary, secondary, and you have candle closed lower lows, right? And if we look at the primary versus the tertiary, you are seeing the signs of the makings of bullish divergence, right? If we want to get some clarity because of how far these pivots are apart here, right? We can zoom out to squeeze these pivots together to get a little clarity. Let's take a look at the eight hour time frame. Is this more clear? Yes, it is, right? So you can call this a single eight hour low, a primary, here's your secondary eight hour low and you got dramatic bullish divergence, right? Is market cipher confirming the relative strength indications? Yes, the blue waves are also confirming what the strength trading system is saying that we are, bit, we are building bullish momentum at these lows, potentially, potentially to print a local low for a shallow, shallow, a shallow bounce, right? And I'd be looking for dynamic resistance on the four hour time frame. If I was looking for a bounce, you would want to mark your four hour trading range here, which would be the high. There's your four hour high. And then we're, you want to keep an eye on your four hour low. And then your static resistance levels would go from the four hour high to the four hour low. And you could do your Fibonacci EXT and look at your levels, right? And so on, on this trading range, you got here's your 50% uh, bear hammer. Here's the 50% bear hammer. We know if price gets rejected from this level, it is more likely and less likely to challenge you know, rejection here, challenge the lows, but not necessarily break the pivot lower lows. And all of our strength traders know our most bearish retracement level, the 38% retracement, which means it is more likely than less likely. And you get confluence with the four hour 200 
if we bounce and get rejected here, we are more likely than less likely to break to pivot lower lows, right? And if we broke to pivot lower lows here, I mean, we, we would have, you know, more, more of the same of these, uh, you know, broadening wedge style patterns, right? Potentially. So, all right, all right, all right. It is time to go to our green list. And, and let's go ahead and hide our drawings and zoom out, okay? Since February 4th, price broke above the 4-hour 200 EMA, making us cautious bulls. We lost the 4-hour 200 EMA on February 17th. We are waiting clarity in regards to the 4-hour 200 EMA for price action. Bitcoin is currently in a daily downtrend. We have a series of daily lower highs and daily lower lows, right? The daily time frame is a different, most more likely scenario than the three-day to weekly time frame. On the daily time frame, we are more likely than less likely to print a higher low relative to the low and print a lower high relative to the current high below the one-day 200 EMA, right? The three-day to weekly time frame, here's our most bearish retracement level. The cat remains unalive, right? The cat remains unalive. Here's here's the unalive face, the frowny face, right? The cat remains unalive as long as price remains on a three-day to weekly time frame below $46,700. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. We will see you all on the next one.